Hello, everybody. Welcome back. We've got Rubina Hawani for another session for you. Um, yeah, we have just been going straight through the day, haven't we? It's been um, really, really busy today, but every single session has been incredible to me. So I'm so glad that uh, that that this is happening. I was actually, I'm kind of surprised it's going as well as it is. It's really, really amazing. Um, Let's see. So I'd like to introduce all of you to Rubina Hawani. If you don't already know Rubina, you should. Uh, you can connect with her on LinkedIn. <laughs> Rubina, like since I've known her, her has been um, totally passionate about helping other people in like so many different ways, um, in their careers, with resumes, just with providing resources. She is, um, she is there for you. So uh, make sure you connect with Rubina if you can. Uh, just she's um, an amazing amazing person to have in your network. Um, she's currently an instructional designer for um, for the state of Utah. And um, she has definitely a solid and powerful voice when she's talking about um, DEI. And so I'm glad that she is going to be doing this 20 minute session for us and um, talking about IDs as agents of change for DEI. And this is a topic that I think TLDC is going to continue to explore. And I haven't really talked to Rubina about it, but it is something that I would like to have um, kind of a regular channel for. So if any of you are out there are interested in also participating in some specific like this conversation, let me know. I kind of would like to build something up. And with that, I'll hand you over. Thank you. Thank you, Lewis. Um, I think I just got voluntold for something <laughs> here at uh, TLDC, but I um, just to give you some background, I this last year, like everybody else, while we're stuck at home and uh, just kind of viewing everything that's happening uh, socially out in our world, out in our lives, right? Um, so much has happened just in this past year. And uh, somewhere at the beginning of this year, I was like, you know what? I am just going to commit more to DEI, to this whole movement, it feels like. And uh, I'll take anybody with me that wants to get on board and hold your hand and take you along on the journey. I really think that this is such an amazing and fascinating time for instructional designers, especially anybody in training and development um, no matter what title you have, right? Or anybody involved in training and development. Um, I, I, it's just such a fascinating time. So many things are happening and uh, we have an opportunity here through these challenges to be an agent for change. And I wanna say that one of the hats that we wear as an instructional designer already is that we are change agents, right? Like we're, we, we get either assigned to training um, or we we start a training, uh, you know, on our own as a consultant, um, and we are implementing change. And so for today, I wanted to really focus on how do we implement change in this very sort of area, this very sensitive topic for all of us, where it pulls us into this place of uncomfort and unfamiliarity, and all sorts of wacky things are happening in the world. And let's just try and frame it in a, if we can, um, to talk about it and then to go from there. So today is just going to be really quick and easy. I'll present some stuff that I have come across, my learning journey with you, and then keep this as like a discussion starter. Um, I'll be available after this to talk in the Air Meet arena for TLDC. So when you get back into the lounge space, just click on the um, the arena tab and I'll be there if you guys have questions or concerns or comments or feedback or anything that's up on your mind about this um, and we'll we'll go from there so very um, to just start off with let's take a look at what happened in our cultural landscape just from last year okay we went through like a throw up <laughs> of social injustice all over this, all over everywhere. And I think it touched everybody here at least. Like you can um, throw in the chat if you want, or like I know there's emojis in there to like uh, raise your hand if you felt any of these personally 
or you've experienced any of these or you know about any of these, I'm sure there's at least one topic that touches you, uh, whether you experienced it yourself or know someone or heard things up on the news. So, you know, um, in the chat, if you can, tell me what these, what these hashtags mean to you. One of the ones that we saw just very recently, Trans Visibility Week, right? Just from this year. Um, Women's History Month, right? Just from this year. Asians are human. Stop Asian hate. Post in the chat what these things mean. What What is coming to your mind? What stories do you remember hearing? Voting Rights Act or Georgia. BLM. Who knows what BLM is? Who hasn't heard of it? I, I can't imagine that there's anybody here that hasn't heard of it. George Floyd. Right? You see the hashtag George Floyd. What do you think about what's happening? Gun control now. Climate change now. And I say this, that all of these things have happened this year. All of these things have happened since last week. So you can think about it in very real terms. There's so much happening from 2020. There's so much happening from the end of last year to the beginning of this year. We had a change in, in political landscape. We have a change in social landscape. Talking about diversity was under um, under duress last year. There was there was policy going out. So you can't do diversity training. And what did that mean? Was that real or not? You know, we we had some people saying. No, we're not going to do diversity training. And now we have a complete, you know, 180. Let's talk about diversity. Let's talk about equity. Let's talk about inclusion. Let's focus on inclusion. Let's really get into it now. You know, we went from this switch about not talking about it, keeping hush hush. Perhaps those are the cultures that we were in. Perhaps that's work place that we were in, the work environment that we were in. And now we're having companies wake up to recognize these things um, and, and try and do something about it. Essentially, we're having us get thrown into a space where somebody says somebody ought to do something about this. And who's going to do what? We've got organizations outside, NPOs, nonprofit organizations that live off of diversity, equity, and inclusion. We've got employers recognizing institutional and systematic disparities in the workforce. And that's a fabulous thing to have happen. And they are doing it. We like to think corporate companies are are perhaps enemies of the people. That's not actually true. There may be some bad companies. There's a lot of really good companies trying to do a lot of good things. They don't know what that looks like. We're in this time and space that is very new, that is um, pulling together all sorts of things. We've got different belief systems that are being challenged, cultural systems that are being challenged, um, racial inequity, gender inequity. Um, and we, as instructional designers, <laughs> get to be kind of front row and center for that, right? Because as soon as your company goes through some changes, they recognize perhaps there's something we need to do something about this. We have some inequities here, or we may have some inequities here in our own company. How do we address this? What do we do? Well, let's hire some people. Okay, step one. They hire some people from diverse backgrounds. That could be race, gender, anything, anything. And that is happening. We've got, just as a search, I did this last week, 29,000 jobs. 29,000 jobs just on LinkedIn alone 
when you put in the search terms diversity, equity, and inclusion, and you can go on there now and check it out right now, especially if you're job hunting, you go, wait a minute, all right, what's, what, what is Rubina talking about? Let me go give this a search and see what I find. Oh my heck, all of these companies are moving in this direction. This is fabulous, this is wonderful. At least for me, I think it's fabulous. I think it's wonderful. Some people may actually think it's very scary. <laughs> Also, because we're we're doing a we're we're doing a shift that's not so easy. We're not talking about diversity training. We're talking about inclusion training. I'm talking about inclusion training. This is something new. Some companies are good at it. Some really suck at it. Some company some trainers are good at doing diversity training, and inclusion training. And sometimes no matter how good your training is that you've developed, the training still fails, right? Who's experienced that? Put that in the chat. If you've ever had a training that's failed, diversity or not, you've made a great training. You've developed it. You've done everything. You've done your needs analysis. You've done your ADDI. You've done everything that you needed to do. Check off all the boxes. You present your training. You publish it. You hit click or you even go live or whatever. Uh, you know, if you're if you're the trained yourself and it still fails. We have lots of articles that refer to diversity training failing because it's so sensitive. It's not that it's hard. It's sensitive. It's personal. It's about getting personal. It's about opening up. It's about getting uncomfortable to find new ways of relationship making and relationship building. You can't build a relationship that you haven't made. You can't, um, you can't get to inclusion without having the diversity first, but how do you get to inclusion, right? I, I don't know, I don't know. Um, this is stuff that's happening to us for the first time perhaps. It's happening to a lot of employees for the first time, perhaps. So we're moving in a new direction and trainers, instructional designers, whatever we call ourselves, we are front row and center to lead out. It gives us an opportunity to lead out from within. What are we looking at? What are we doing? Here's an example scenario of what might happen in the next few months or what may be already happening on the ground right now. Um, if employers are hiring diversity, then at some point across your table in the next few months, you're gonna see changes to policy, changes to practices, changes, expectational changes for behavior changes to happen. And what does that mean for you? Let's say you're tasked as the instructional designer to create inclusive training. Go, right? What does that mean? What do you do? Where do you start? Okay, I'm gonna do a needs assessment, okay? All right, step one, needs assessment and figure out who the learning audience. The learning audience may be your coworkers that you, um, I, I kind of j laugh jokingly because do we know all of our um, co-workers personal beliefs and values I don't I, I definitely don't you might great wonderful you you know you you know everybody and and, and you're off and running you're a step in, um, ahead of me because I don't I have to learn them I have to be able to recognize my own beliefs right and start from within so diversity equity and inclusion training is hard a little bit because it's having to open up. Framing questions. Take a look at these and think about these. I'm not gonna have you like put stuff in the chat, you know, for that. Um, these are just starting points. These are just think about. What are the values and beliefs of current employees? How do you know that? Can you conduct a survey? Do you go out and just ask people, take your little pad and pencil, and, and it's COVID time, so good, great, like, you know, all of the stuff that I'm thinking about in person, you can't. So you're gonna get a Zoom, you're gonna get somebody on your Zoom, right? And then you're gonna go ask them, by the way, can I can I just briefly figure out your, how are you, how are you going to figure this out? 
Is your employer going to tell you? Is your boss going to tell you? Are you going to perhaps do something yourself to figure that out? Why? Why is that important? Well, because you need to figure out what the biases are, right? When we're talking about diversity, equity, and inclusion, we're talking about conscious biases, unconscious biases, subconscious biases, and about 10 or 12 other biases. I'm still learning. This is my year of learning about the different biases. I'm still learning about them. There are so many out there I didn't even realize. There are some biases that you as the instructional designer, as a training developer, as the leader of this piece, this training, have to come to terms with yourself, perhaps. What are your own positions? What are your own beliefs? What are your own values? What are your own biases? Why is it important for you to know that? Well, perhaps you need to recognize some things within yourself so that you can become a more inclusive person, that you can become a more inclusive training developer. Is inclusivity training just smacking a picture of all sorts of different people? No, right? We've, we've picked up some of that. Megan Torrance has talked about that. Jessica Jackson has talked about that. Um, this morning, Heather kind of nodded to some things in there. It's not about just putting the representation, what we understand as a representation of people's pictures and people's identities and people's things in the training or however it is that you design your training, maybe you're designing a training or whatnot. Um, how do you know for sure that you're putting respectful images? How do you know for sure that you're representing someone other than you in a full manner? That isn't offensive, right? And we're living in a time where perhaps so many things can be offensive. So many things are making people offended. So how do you think about it? How do you approach it? How do you deal with it? How do you handle it for yourself as an instructional designer and then lead out from within to the other staff members, the other employees? The same questions you're going to have in your head for yourself are going to be the same questions that you're going to want to ask your staff, your boss, the rest of the team. And I do hope that the DEI training that you may be developing for your organization is starting from the top down. If there's any expectation that somebody just handed you this job, this assignment, and it's starting from the bottom up, Recognize early that's a red flag for you. That's not going to work. Perhaps you're in a toxic environment and you need to have some more deep discussions. Because if the expectation is we just hired some folks, now let's make sure everybody gets along and is happy. But we're not going to change. We're not going to recognize anything. And there's nothing for us to do at the management and supervisory level you need to kind of reshape and include everybody in the training, have everybody's roles, have everybody's responsibilities, right? How will you design training that's inclusive of the new employees, but not be disrespectful of the former ones? So I've kind of gone over some of that. And if you have questions, please post that either in the chat here, or I will be available afterwards in the arena and we can definitely talk about it either in a group atmosphere and or privately one-on-one. -on -one. I'm more than happy to stick around to have that addressed if you have any more questions. But last question, can your training face resistance? I would say absolutely without a doubt, you could even put it in the chat. Yes, yes. In any employee group over two, there's going to be difference, right? There's going to be difference of value, opinion. We're not all the same. We're not all designed all the same. I think it's great. So you are going to have people that believe differently, feel differently, look differently, right? You know that. You know that. There's no reason to even question. That's what's been happening out in the world. That's definitely going to be happening out in your workplace. 
employers definitely know, HR definitely knows, you can always pick their head as your SME to say, what problems are we having in our organization with employees? What is going on in our employees for us to have inclusivity training? What have you seen? What do you feel? What do you know? And then you, as the instructional designer, lead from within to out to include everybody in that training, including HR. Make sure you have HR in their place also for what they need to be doing to make the environment more inclusive. It has to include everybody. These trainings fail when they fail to include them. And when you have resistance, what are you going to do about it? How do you handle it? How do you approach it? Do you approach it? Does somebody else approach it? It's a question you have to think about when you're doing your needs assessment for the training or at some point or at some part in some aspect, you know, depending upon what you do. And I'm just using Addy as a model. You can use Addy, you can use Sam, you can use any, any, any sort of model for your development um, design thinking. Um, I, I use design thinking a lot, especially for this kind of training. Um, where, where do you talk about resistance? When do you talk about resistance and how do you deal with resistance? It will happen. Make sure you have those discussions. Make sure you plan for that. Otherwise, you're going to plan for that bounce back, right? That failure, right? You're going to have that resistance and then it's just going to unwind everything, unwrap everything, and you're going to be back to the beginning of her and or perhaps leaving um, to go to somewhere new or do something new or just say, wait, no, please don't give me that DEI training on my plate. I may not be the best person to make this, right? Something's going to happen. Hey, Rubino, sorry to mm -hmm. cut you off, but um, we've got uh, the next session starting in just a little bit, which is, this is a great sure. segue into that one with sure. Megan and Je Jessica, the women in L&D, an intersectional conversation. So um, let's go ahead and just close this one out and I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and jump there, okay? Absolutely, a couple of things here. Um, I've got resources here. This is downloadable, it's in the arena. You can download the PDF to this and then I'll be in there for a little bit of time for about 20 minutes more because I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to close out today also. Uh, reach out to me on LinkedIn, on anything to ask questions about this. Let's keep the conversation going. And thank you, Lewis, for giving me this time. Absolutely, thank you. Okay, thanks everybody. We'll see you in the next one.